In this lesson, we are going to connect to the MongoDB database and see sample users. At the end of this lesson, you will have a database on MongoDB Atlas cloud server, and you can use it in your code. To get the source code of this lesson, go to repository and in the comment section, find video 13, connect to the MongoDB and see sample users. Let's get to code. Here is the plan to connect to MongoDB. We have two options, installing MongoDB locally or using Atlas MongoDB on the cloud. Let us start by the simple one. Go to mongodb.com slash atlas slash database and click on try free. Then sign up with your Google account. Click on sign up. Then log in to cloud.mongodb.com. Click on create, then click on database, click on build a database, select free shirt, and select a default option, click on create cluster, then create a database user, enter let's say next tailwind amazona, and enter a password, and click on create user. Then in the network access, make sure you add it click add ip address set it to 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 and click all so we accept requests from all ip addresses to this server then click on database it says your cluster is being created wait a while to create your cluster after creating your cluster, it's time to create a database. Click on Browse Collections. Click Add My Own Data. Enter the database name to Next, Tailwind, Amazona, and the collection name to Test. Click Create. Awesome. We created the Next Tailwind Amazona database. Let's get the connection string for it. Click on Database again. Click on Connect. Click on connect your application and copy this. Go to the code in the root folder right here. Right click, new file, set file name to .env and set mongodb underline uri equal to paste the code here. So here is the address of your connection to Atlas MongoDB. As you see, the username and password need to be filled. So go to the database access. Here is your database username. Copy and paste it in the username. And for the password, it's the password that you entered in the first step of going to cloud.mongodb.com. If you forget it, just Remove this user and create another user and enter the user and password and copy and paste it right here. Also, after a slash, we need to enter the database name. Next, Tailwind Amazona. Make sure the database name here is equal to the database name in the database section in the browse collections right here. This value should be equal to this value. So here is my database connection, MongoDB URI. You need to create your yours because I'm going to delete it after the class. And we are ready to test it. To test it, just install MongoDB Compass. Type MongoDB Compass. Click on Download Now. And here, click on download button. After download, run it and follow the instruction step and open Compass in your computer. Here, you need to paste your connection string. Go to in that env file, copy from MongoDB till to the end and paste it right here and click on connect. It's connecting to the Atlas MongoDB. Awesome. Here, we connected to the database. It's next Tailwind Amazona. If I click on it, I have the test collection here. 
Good, we successfully connected to the MongoDB database and we are ready to use it in the code. Let us start by going to utils.js, right click and create db.js. We use this file to connect to MongoDB. To connect to the MongoDB, we use Mongo's package. It's a MongoDB object modeling tools for Node.js. To do that, we need to install it. Based on the documentation here, we need to run npm install mongos. Open your terminal, make sure you are in a new terminal and run npm install mongos. Next step is importing mongos from mongos and then define an async function named connect. We use this function to connect to the MongoDB. First of all, define a constant connection equal to empty object because we are going to save the previous connection to the MongoDB. We define this constant. Before connecting in the connect function, check connection that is connected. If we already connected, we don't need to connect again. So we says we say already connected and stop the function. Save the code to format it. Otherwise, check this condition. If mongoose.connections.length is greater than zero, it means that we have connections in the connection queue. So get ready a state of the first connections in the mongoose and set it in the connection variable is connected field. Then check it. If it's equal to one, it means that the ready state is one and we are connected to the database. So log, use previous connection and return. It means that there is no need to connect to the database because we already connected to it. Otherwise, if this connected is not equal to one, we need to disconnect because we are not in the connected mode. Good. Let's go for the connection code. Use mongos.connect and pass the mongodb URI in the process.env file. So make sure that this value is exactly equal to this value here. mongodb underline URI. And log this message, new connection, and set connection that is connected to the ready state in the connections queue in the db object. Save the code and here is the connect function. At the end, define db object equal to an object that has connect as a field and export default db. Also, I'm going to implement the disconnect function too. It is very simple. After the connect function, define async function disconnect and check the connection that is connected. It if it is true, check the production. If we are in the production mode, then call mongo.disconnect and set is connected to false. Otherwise, console log not disconnected. So we only disconnect in the production mode, not in the development mode, because we are not going to connect and disconnect on every change in the code because it consumed the process a lot. At the end, export disconnect to like this. Save the code in the DB and let's go to seed sample users. Go to the data.js. Here we have sample products. Before products, add sample users, create an array for users. And here is the admin user set name to john email to admin at sign example.com for password use bcrypt package to encrypt the password in the database so no one can access to the password in the database and set is admin to true do the same for the second user name email password and is admin to false this one is normal user and this one is admin user. We need to import bcrypt from 
bcrypt.js like this. Let's import bcrypt.js npm install bcrypt.js. Good. Next step, go to the pages folder. Inside the API, create a new file seed.js. What we're gonna do in the seed.js is to seed sample users. Define a handler function. It's an async function. And then call db.connect. Import db from utils slash db. After connecting to the db, it's time to seed sample users. To do that, we need to create user model. So go to the root folder of project, right click, new folder, and the set folder name to models. And inside models, right click, new file, and set it to user.js. In Mongo's, to deal with the database, we need to create model. So here it's time to create user model. To create a model, first of all, we need to create a schema for that model using new mongoose.schema function. And a schema function accept an object as a parameter. And inside that object, we need to list the fields of user. The first field is the user name, and the type of it is a string, and it is required. Second field is email type as a string required, it should be unique. So two users can't have same email. Next field is password, like name. And the last one is the is admin flag. It's of type boolean required. By default, it's false. Also, second parameter for the schema is timestamp. So when we create a new record, it automatically add, created at, and updated at field for the user model. Great. It's time to define the user model, const user, and check mongoose.models.user for the user model. If we already created that model in the mongoose, there is no need to go for mongoose.model function. But if it's null for the first time, we need to create the model. It accepts two parameters, the model name and the schema as a second parameter. At the end, we need to export default user. Here is the code to create user model. Let's go back to c.js and use it here. Type await and type user. Press tab to import user from user model and call delete many. We are going to delete all previous user in the user collection. Then call await user.insert many. We are going to add sample users. But where is the source of that user? It's coming from data in the utils folder and the users in the data. So what we do here is to insert users in the data.js. Here is the sample users. So what we expect is to have two users in the database after running seed. Let's call disconnect after finishing database operation and send this message seeded successfully. At the end, we need to export the fault handler. Go to data.js, save it, and let's test it. Localhost column 3000 slash API slash seed and press enter. Uh -huh. It says error, the URI is undefined. To fix it, open the terminal, find the project, terminal, stop it, and run it again. By running this, it loads .env configuration from .env file, so we have MongoDB URI in the project. Let's refresh it. Awesome, see that successfully. Let's check the MongoDB campus. Here, click on refresh. Aha, uh -huh. we have users collection 
and it has two users that we created right here. Here is the lesson for connecting to the database and seeding sample users. You can install MongoDB locally. Just go to this link, mongodb.com slash doc slash manual slash installation and follow the instruction here based on your operating system. For me, it's macOS. I just click on it and I need to follow the instruction here to install the MongoDB locally and use the local address instead of at MongoDB Atlas if you like to use it locally. It's up to you. Let's review what we did in this lesson. In the package.json, we installed bcrypt.js to encrypt password and mongos to connect to MongoDB. In user.js, we created a model for mongos to connect to create collection for users and deal with it. We create a seed.js to seed sample users. We need it for the next step to authenticate the user. In the data.js, we added two sample users. And in the db.js, we connect and disconnect from MongoDB database. That's it about this lesson. Until next lesson, bye-bye.